Well, are you ready for the reveal? Yes. All right, I'm going to grab the bottles. Hold on one second. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the reveal. This first one, you said you would give it uh, two and a half? Yeah. Two and a half? Yeah, watch me um, be upset about this. Well, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to be upset about. This is all just, this is education. You're going to school. You're okay. taking a whiskey class. Yeah, okay. That's all it is. All right, so the first one, the Compass Box oh. Orchard House. Now, so it's a blendy blend. This is a blend. It is not a single malt, and there's no age statement on it. Okay. Um, bottled at 46%. There's a reason for that, and we can nerd out on it later if you want to, but regardless. This is one of the new core ranges, feel free, from Compass Box. Uh, Compass Box is a company that was founded by, uh, I always get it, John Glazer. I always want to call him Thomas Glazer yeah, for some John reason. Glazer. I don't know why. Anyway, founded by Thomas, uh, mm. or John Glazer, who is an American who loves pushing scotch in new directions and not breaking the rules of the Scotch Whiskey Society and their bylaws and everything like that, but just kind of pushing against them a little bit. Mm. He's gotten his hand slapped numerous times to the point where they have literally changed laws about how you can make scotch because of this guy. Oh, cool. So he's, like literally, he's an I American like giving the scotch guys a little bit of a middle finger. But that's only the like the snooty whiskey board. He has, and you can tell once you get into Compass Box, he has the utmost respect for the whiskey itself. The cool thing about that bottle, 45 bucks. 45 bucks. Hey, 45 I wasn't that half bad and I said how much I would pay for it. Yeah, so, so it's it is a blend. Um I actually printed this out for you if you want to take a look. Um, dude, what a nerd. I well, love it. Compass Box, one of the things they do that pisses off the Scotch Whiskey Society is they'll tell you everything that's in that bottle. Oh. Every single blend, every single type of cast. James Buchanan, Special Team Reserve, did not. So, in this case, I think it's this one. Gives you, it's from Coinlish, it's from Linkwood. It's, Whoa. It tells you every distillery, every type of cask, that's everything sick. in it. I like that, yeah. Uh, distilleries, uh, uh, you know, follow the mold here because... <laughs> I don't want to guess what's in my blend. I just want to be told what's in my blend because that's bullshit. Okay, thanks. <laughs> anyway, so that's the first one. Moving on to the second one. The Glen Farkless 17. I wasn't far off with You that. were not. I'm going to go ahead and 15. pop this out of the tin. Actually, my first Glen Farkless as well. Yeah. Uh, Glen Farkless is, in my opinion, one of the best whiskey makers out there. Their distillate is some of the best distillate in Scotland. You, it is just incredibly consistent and always delicious. Uh, pro tip, if you want to get Glen Farkless 105, it's a no age statement thing. Um, it is mind-blowingly delicious and absolutely worth every penny. Um, so here you go, Glen so Farkless. this is a Highland. Well, no. It's not a Highland, even though the <laughs> bottle says Highland. It is funny. It says... Highland single malt oh, scotch space side. from Space Side. Now, hey, floral notes I got on that, which is Space Side. And by the way, all you Lismore 18 people, I definitely said in that video that I liked Space Sides, like Balveni and uh, Abelor. Yeah, I like this one also with Space Side. Lismore just sucks. All right, continue. <laughs> no, it's okay. So if you look at a map of Scotland with the whiskey regions, you've got like the Highlands and then right in the top, you've got Speyside, which is kind of nestled in the Highlands there. So some people consider Speyside to be like a little sub-region of the Highlands. Mm. Don't okay. say that if you're in Speyside, they might murder you. <laughs> but regardless, yeah, it says literally on the bottle in big bold letters, Highland, but Glen Farkless is considered a Speyside distiller. That's okay. Um, it's not at all confusing. So they actually have, uh, one of the things I like about them, they source all of the water from the Ben Rennes River. It comes from oh, a river sweet. that runs right by the distillery. Um, they have worked really closely with like farmers and everything to make sure that that water is as clean as possible. Which one of these did I say was briny? That's was coming it? up. Oh, is this one? Uh, it was the number four. Oh, okay. Then I don't remember. I'm getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one though, you said it was roughly 15 years old, so you were close. This is about 150 bucks because it's 17 years <laughs> yeah, old. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad, actually. No, it's not. And honestly, you're like, I think that 
it is a lighter 17 year so mm -hmm. it, it i some people they re, when they review it they say it's kind of muted not as lively as some other whiskeys i get that but that's also because it's it is very light for what it is it's only 43 yeah. percent. so it's it's um the smoothness you mentioned definitely it is incredibly smooth oh hold on this real quick the back of this bottle Distinctive butterscotch and sherry flute flavors develop slowly with great depth and excellent balance. Long lasting and smooth finish. Guilty. All right. That dark board again. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. Number three. This is a Glen Scotia. Never had? 15 year. Okay. Glen Scotia is a Campbelltown distillery. There's only three distilleries in Campbelltown. Do you know what they are? Well, I know one is Makes Hazelburn. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the name of the distillery is. Springbank. Springbank. Spring, it's the only one I've had is Springbank. So this is one of the other three. Um, an incredibly underrated distillery. You said this was getting a strong four. This bottle costs $80. Damn! It's a 15-year whiskey Me like that you can this. get for between 80 and 90 bucks. Um, Bottled yeah, it, I think, dude. is it 46%? Yep. I'm going to go ahead and say, like, if I like this one, I also like the Springbank Hang at Hazelburn. I think I had the 17. No, I had the 13. Yeah. I had the Hazelburn 13, which is in the Oloroso casks. Mm -hmm. um, so, of the two of the three Campbelltown distilleries I've had, they are both awesome. So, yeah. don't be sleeping on Campbelltown. They're good. Uh, no, they're not. The price is for uh, people... All the bourbon nerds who then went to Scotch and drove the prices up there have discovered Campbelltown. And now Springbank 10, I used to be able to find for literally like 45, 50 bucks. It's now retailing for 150 bucks. It's insane. Thanks, Joe Biden. <laughs> All right, number four. four, which is my highest rating on this one. And I honestly, gave it a four and a half. I'm not entirely surprised given that it's from Isla. Oh, I love me some Isla. However, it's an unpeated Isla. And I've actually not had this before, Bunahaven. Bunahaven is, again, one of my favorite distilleries. It's not as big as <laughs> like the your Lefroigs and yep. uh, Ardbeg and Lagavulin. This is a 13 year single malt aged in, uh, or finished in Marsala wine casks, wine. which is a sweet Italian wine. Oh, we love Italians. Yes. Uh, one of the things I love about Bunahaven is that they um, experiment with all sorts of different types of casks that you like would never think um this one it was very strange uh this one was 10 years first in bourbon barrels and then okay. three years in marsala wine to give it that anyway so bourbon and then marsala wine casks um i love bunahav and like i said they expect yeah hey if, if you ever fan. have a chance to go there you can buy bottles at the distillery they're not sold anywhere else that are aged in like you know, super tusk. Oh, did you get this when you went out? When you went out there? I actually found this just up the road. It was on a it, dusty shelf, and I was just like, "I will take that." Yeah, home. dude, that's the first uh, Marsala cask I've had. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I got that for ninety five dollars. That's hey, you know what? Any of these, even being over a hundred dollars, except for this one, but these three, the fact that like these these two especially are under a hundred dollars is insane to me. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, one of the other things is, so guys like Compass Box and even Bunahaven and Glen Farkless, they're producing between one to three million liters of whiskey a year. Yeah, it's a lot. Glen Scotia yeah. only produces about half a million. So they're much smaller as You know as what, they take as... pride in their baby. They really do. It was good. They really So do. these two have been the highest on me so far. Yes. All right, number five. Now, this is the one that I guessed was 215, just because of, uh, I don't know, some gut. So this is an Edredal. Never heard of them. <laughs> so this is, <gasps> is a, it is a Highland. Um, I said 10 years on that. And it is 10 years For old. damn sure. Yes. Ding! Um, so good job on that. Um, Edredal is one of the smallest distilleries in Scotland. Yeah. Their overall different. production is less than 100,000 liters a year. Wow. Usually around 90,000. So if you think about a liter, a liter is about 30% more than a bottle. Okay. So they're producing maybe 100,000, 120,000 bottles of whiskey a year. That's 10,000 cases, which if you think about yeah. 8 billion people on the planet, that's not a lot of whiskey. No. So is this, this says Highland. Is this an actual Highland this is then? An actual okay, this is an actual <laughs> Highland. Okay. Um, and the thing that made it interesting is it is aged in burgundy wine casks. Anything aged in wine casks. But like... Where's the pepper come from? 
That, come, that can come from the burgundy wine. It can also come from the other barrels. They yes. weren't, they're not super transparent about uh, the rest of the barrels the okay. way that like Compass Box oh, yeah. is. That being said, um, don't tr if you go to Scotland, don't try to go to Edradour. You can visit. They have like maybe a little shop, but you're not going to get a tour. They're entirely too small. Oh, okay. Um, they're like, nope, we don't do tours. <laughs> um, you have to know somebody in the industry to get in there. So, of course, I haven't been, but I know a couple guys that have. Did you try it, to go there when you were over there? No, I, oh, I only okay. went to Isla. But uh, oh, that yes. being said, as soon as I tasted that, like I said, I knew I had to have that bottle. Because as you it's just very accurately said, it's, it's so different. It's yeah, you've, I've never had it before. It's awesome. Yeah. So. Um, that bottle is also about 160 bucks. Okay. So it's interesting, and you're paying for that complexity and that difference. Yeah, for like some like if you knew what sh if you knew what it was prior, like hey, you're gonna get these notes, and be like never had it before. I would spend that money on that mm -hmm. just to get the experience because a lot of like whiskey yep. tastings and trying stuff out is just trying to figure out. Hey, do I like this stuff? No? Okay, well, whatever. You know. Oh, and the other thing is, so all of these so far have been uh, either 46 for these or 43% for that. That one yeah. is uh, 60%. It's wowsy, wowsy. So we've cranked the alcohol up. Yeah, I definitely tasted it on that one. I did. Yeah. All right, and finally, last but certainly not least, I'm a little bit of the is. wild card. This is a barrel dovetail. This is an American whiskey. Ooh, America. This is a blend of different bourbons. Ooh. And it's aged in port, rum, and Cabernet barrels. Oh. Yeah, so, there's a lot of stuff going on with that. So like, all the sweetness you were so getting, definitely, <laughs> all the like, sweetness you were getting, definitely, that's coming from those those casks. Um, also, you described it as hot. It is 62%. Yeah, it's cask strength, 62%. That's, that's crazy. I actually... Never had barrel before, and I know someone commented that I need to try a barrel or a bourbon. Oh wait, barrel bourbon. It's the same. The same it's the same. Thing? So they are similar to Compass Box, where they don't make whiskey, but okay. they will blend whiskeys or produce bourbon under their label, but it's distilled by someone else. So in this case, um, the guy who founded it, which his name is Joe Beatrice. He actually took his inspiration from guys like John Glazer and other independent bottlers in Scotland and said, why can't we do that here in America? And that's what Barrel is. Um, hey. And honestly, I think they produce some outstanding. Hey, whiskey. if you're, I like bourbon. I, I come in to do this whole like YouTube stuff. Like I've, I was always like bourbon's bad. No, bourbon's good. Oh, bourbon's so. fantastic. The problem is, and the current market is entirely overpriced. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't have to pay $150 for a bottle that 10 years ago, or not even 10 years ago, was 25 Hey, what old Scout Smooth Ambler, 45 So, a good whiskey. I'm going to go around these. That was my that was my two and a half. Mm -hmm. This was my three. Yep. Um, hold on. This was my three. Um, this was my four. This was my four and a half. Damn, I got, yeah, that was good. And this was also a yeah. four. Oh, the salinity you were getting, they are literally right on the water. Yeah, I guarantee, yeah, yeah. Which, I actually was a little surprised you didn't get something similar on the Glen Scotia, because being in Campbelltown, they are also right on the sea, like right on the, the coast there. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I love about that one is I'll get like, I know you say you hate it, but like a caramel salty popcorn sort of thing, in addition to all the fruit and everything else. My dad said the first dram he had of that reminded him of one of those uh, creamsicles. Oh, he's got yeah. orange and cream. And I love how everybody gets like immediately they can just like figure something out that yep. it tastes like and it's just like for everybody. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it, sir. I did. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. Um, if you liked it, like it. If you want to hit that little red subscribe button, make it gray. That'd be cool too. Um, cheers.